Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont Show. My name is Bruce Wilson. I'm the Executive Director of Service Rendered Incorporated. Straight Talk Vermont is one of our programs for many, many years, since 1999, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's involved in a lot of different things. Um, but today I want to make an announcement about our um, art gallery. It's called Art So Wonderful, and it's in, located in University Mall. It's going under renovations. Oh. All right, guys, it's going to be nice for so We're taking out some old, ugly, um, like, shelves, shelving, and, um, f you know, make it flatter and put some screen up there where you can hang out, um, hang up um, better art, you know, the art look more presentable. And uh, we're doing our floors over in the back one. It's going to be, um, like, floating cork floor mm. for uh, people like um, our staff to come and chill. They have couches back there, and somebody talking about, we're going to game stop, game, <laughs> game stop yes. and get some stuff, you know. <laughs> I don't play the game you use, but I might just learn, you know. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be open on March 7th. And so everybody, we're going to have a big performance in Center Court. You know, you've been a part of that. Yeah, that big, sounds great. Those, those, um, I'll events. look at the calendar. Yeah. So today, <laughs> I'm very excited to have my dear friend and honorable state senator, Keisha Ram here. Thank you, Yes, Bruce. for coming on the show. Uh, you know, we, you're on... One time was in the summertime, somewhere was in Yeah, we did Battery, Battery, Park. Battery Park. That's that was right. So cool, wasn't it? it was. It Battery was. Battery Cool was awesome. Yeah. Well, just out looking at the lake and just chilling. Yeah. And so my my co host today is Tim CC, and he's, he's got some things, he got some questions and things he wanted to say, and I'm happy that he's um, come on the show. And Thank so, you so much for having me, Bruce. I really appreciate this opportunity. It's going to be great to have a conversation with all y'all. I know, yeah. I know, man. When you, you know, you, you, know, you, you, um, Worked with um, Keisha before at uh, in UVM or somewhere somewhere along those lines. All along those all along those lines. Mm -hmm. And so why not, man? You know, I don't like people around. You know, like 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 my dear people, like Keisha. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> since you you know you have some spirits, what with her, it's all good. You know, you give your shot at the title. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so Keisha, Bruce. what's good? What's good? So can you tell me? So you've been in, I know you've been in the legislature for many years, around 10 or so, right? Yeah, t it's been a decade. Decade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you think about the time you've been in the legislature, you know, for 10 years? What, what have you, what's your measurements, should I say? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, what's good, Bruce, I'm just so grateful to be here with both of you. I mean, you're both doing a lot of incredible community work and bringing arts and opportunity to young people, especially um, when it's so needed. So that's what's good. So thank you. And it's yeah. always a pleasure to be with you. Um, yes, I am in my 10th year in the Two legislature. Years. A lot of people can't believe that. Not me either. <laughs> I started uh, as, I started my campaign as a senior at the University of Vermont, mm -hmm. won that election. You know, sometimes I, um, I realize how far we, away we are from uh, then Senator Obama's visit in 2006 oh, to wow. Vermont. Um, so I was a sophomore at that time, and it's funny because it's all coming full circle. Um, that year was the year that then uh, State Senator Peter Welch and then Congressman Bernie Sanders ran for the House seat and the Senate seat, respectively. And uh, they knew that they were, you know, popular guys, but that it would be helpful to have somebody who was a bigger draw than them come out. And so they invited this rock star senator from Illinois to join them and it did work. We had about 7,000 people in the crowd. And as it, leading up to the event, they said, you know, we're on campus at UVM with this rally. We don't have any women on stage. Does anybody know somebody who's not afraid to speak up? <laughs> <laughs> who could that be? <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's how I got my, my start in politics. I joined them on stage, I welcomed folks to the event, and I started the event off by talking about why it's so important for young people to get involved, that if young people are not at the table on issues like student debt and climate change, then those issues would be resolved on our backs. And so we needed leaders like, like Bernie and everyone on stage to help you know, advance those issues. So I, I finished my little speech, we go on down the line to this senator from Illinois, and he gets up and starts talking about you know, having a father from Kenya and a mother from Kansas, and I have a father from India and a mother from Illinois, and I'm thinking, wow, I've never heard a story like this one in politics. Oh. And, you know, he says, I have a funny name no one can pronounce. I said, me too. You know, so I'm sitting there enraptured. And in the middle of all that, you know, he says to Bernie, and you know what, Bernie, if you don't behave yourself, we're going to run Keisha for the Senate instead of you. Ah. 
It was the first time anyone <laughs> encouraged me to run for office. And Incredible. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was. And, you know, I had not thought of myself. I had been an activist. I cared about, you know, the environment and human, you know, health and just didn't think that politics was where, where I was headed. Mm. Um, and I thought if there's a place for someone like him in, in mainstream politics, there's a place for someone like me. We shared a ballot two years later in 2008. Wow. I became the youngest legislator in the country, and he became the 44th president of the United States. And so, you know, Vermont has created a lot of opportunity for me, and my only goal as a state legislator and now the first woman of color in the state Senate has been to create that kind of opportunity for other people to feel seen and uplifted and a part of change in this state, in this country. Well, I want to say, you know, I want to thank you for all the incredible work you do, you do and are doing. Um, it's like, you know, you, you um, like, like Bernie, for instance. Like when Bernie say, um, well, I, you know, I, I was in Burlington and I talked to Tim CC and he, and he said about he need, his wages need to be higher right. and, and he can't pay any health insurance and, and, you know, he need medication should be lower. You know, he, well. he means it. <laughs> he, he means it. He means it. You know, he means it. And that's the same with you, Casey. Yeah. When you go, you go all around, you talk to the people, you're in the communities, you, you know, you, um, you ask the questions, you learn from it, and, um, and you try to figure out what's good, how you can make it better for those individuals. And so that's one of the reasons why I support you. Thank you. You know, personally, my, my personal support. And, and um, because you do those incredible things. And, and you're so knowledgeable. It's not like you're just coming out your own thinking. You go by what everybody else, what everybody else is thinking. You know, you, you work for the people who you serve. They don't serve you. So, and that's, that's, that means a lot to me, you know. It yeah. It really does. You know, I mean, it, it, that speaks to a kind of philosophy that I don't always talk about out loud, but it takes a lot for someone to reach out to their elected official. You know, unless you are part of a privileged few who think I'm going to bug my legislator all the time or, you know, I'm going to contact my state senator um, or my, you know, the congressional office. Mm. Um, when that person reaches out, they are either so angry or so desperate or so, you know, lost, uh, feeling like there's no one to help them. And, you know, that is a really critical moment to stop and say, you know, this person, how I treat this person will influence how they think about asking for help of anyone, but particularly how much they trust government to be their partner in building a better life. And so I think about that, you know, so often when people reach out and I'll often write back and not only affirm what they've said, but ask, is it okay if I share this story um, in committee, you know? when the Department of Labor switched people's social security numbers um, who were getting unemployment. And, you know, I would, I would say to the commissioner, I mean, this is really serious. You have people who never thought they'd be unemployed up at night wondering where their social security number is and who has it. And, you know, I collect on a spreadsheet all of the stories of unemployment, despair in the pandemic. You know, we, we owe it to people that when they reach out, um, we uplift their voice because hopefully that helps other people feel like they can reach out as well. Can you recount one of those stories? I'm so curious. I, I've heard Bernie speak so many times and mm -hmm. I, it, one thing that really speaks to me about how he speaks is he speaks through other people's experiences yeah. exactly like that. Yeah. I'm curious, what, what are some Vermonters experiences you've been able to resolve? Well, so I mean actually when I was thinking about taking this leap from being a state senator to running for our lone congressional seat, it, it, I was really agonizing, you know, is this the right thing for, for me, for my I have a new marriage, you know, for my husband, um, for Vermonters. I mean, who is the right person to represent them? And uh, as I was internally, you know, making those decisions, um, a friend reached out and he said, oh, I saw your name come up on a listserv and we haven't talked in a while. Um, I don't know if you remember, we knew each other at UVM. Mm -hmm. And um, I, was, I, did, I was really struggling to get my wife here from the Caribbean. And I didn't know where to turn, so I started with you because you had just been elected to the legislature and we were young people. And, um, you know, you figured out who to contact in the federal delegation. You wrote a letter of reference for her. You stayed with me throughout the process. And it's been a while. I just want you to see my two daughters, you know, wow. here in Vermont, picking blueberries, you know, eating blueberries, picking blueberries. Uh -huh. They wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you. And, That's you know, I that was. I thought was... I mean, how, what do you say to that? <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that is the difference that government can make is helping two people, you know, 
who love each other live their lives and raise a family in a state that they want to live in. And so I just, I love doing this work. Um, and that's what it comes down to is that casework for mm -hmm. every veteran who can't figure out how to get, uh, you know, a loan to improve their home, for every person having an immigration issue, for every young person who wants an internship and feels left out. Um, we need to restore that trust and mm -hmm. connection. That's great. So it really happens on the personal level. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, people reach out constantly with stories that can be extrapolated just to the larger experience. Sure. You know, someone reached out, who's, she said, I'm at my wit's end with my, you know, with my childcare facility in Milton. I have, you know, I'm trying to take care of a number of these kids. One gets sick. They all have to go home. We lose revenue. We're trying to hold on and help people who need childcare. Um, it's a constant struggle. And so, you know, I asked, could I read from her email in committee just a couple weeks ago because we need some emergency funding for families and child care centers and those struggling to keep their doors open and keep kids safe and healthy in the pandemic. Before you go on, I, um, you know, I was, it's, I'm so used to calling you the case of Ram. And yeah. so I forgot the hands there. And it's, but every time she works, throw her hand up, it's bling on her arm, on her finger. That's right, right. Keep, keep I keep yeah. like going like this. <laughs> Let's see that. So, yes. so I mean, now it's it's doubled up. All but right. the the original engagement ring um, was my husband's grandmother's. She raised five children in Orleans, Vermont. Jacob's mother grew up speaking French until high school. Um, so I just feel really honored. You know, I never wow. thought I'd have somebody's grandmother's ring who, I know, isn't that you awesome? know. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. You know, that is, you know <laughs> congratulations. And Thank stop you. Stop throwing your hand. No, you're blinding no, me I over should, here. No, I, I, should me over here. I should know better. I should know better. I'm so animated today because I haven't been on CCTV for so long. I, know, I haven't been we, able to do this CCTV. for so long. Go ahead. I'm sorry, everyone, Tim. No, no, no. Yeah, I was, I mean, I love that uh, in Vermont I've noticed the politics are really on that interpersonal level. Yeah. You know, I, I'm far more apt to vote for a legislator or a, a future senator or, or a representative that I personally know. Mm -hmm. And I'm, that's what I love about mm -hmm. Vermont. I mean, I, I talk about, I escaped northern New Jersey to come to Vermont <laughs> almost a decade ago, and I absolutely love it for that access. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think this is a really unique place to be uh, involved in politics. No doubt about yes, it. And plus, plus, if you, you know, um, like you got somebody like your location who's representing you, you mm -hmm. know, you feel like a person, me, a person of color. You know, I am, I am, people, people don't know, I am a person of color. And uh, in Vermont, when I came here, it was the whitest state in America in 1989. And uh, somebody says it's the second, I don't know, is it second or third? Or you something. know, they say second, <laughs> although that's to Maine. And I believe Maine has a bigger tribal population. They have federally recognized tribes. So I don't know how we yeah. became well, second instead yeah. of first. Well, <laughs> I think, well, second or third, whatever, right. we're still way up there. We're the whitest state in America. And then for me, um, it's very important that somebody who um, looks like me, who's equal to every, equal to everyone, because obviously you equal to everyone because not many people, 0.1% of people African Americans live in the state. So obviously you're equal to everybody. Um, but but what a what a great surprise I say, <laughs> you know, even with Obama, you know, what I mean, you know, have a person who's like you, who's actually fighting for everyone, but definitely someone who understands because you're a person of color who looks like me, the plights mm -hmm. that, that, that I personally go through. I don't have to tell you the story. Yeah. If I say case of racism, if I use that word, you understand, you, you know, you get it. I don't have to go and tell you everything about it. You feel it right in your heart. Right. You feel it. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so, and you know, um, and I say to you that, you know, you know, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, you understand what that means, you know what I mean? Because how, how, how you know, uh, what part of, of people who like me have been a part of that? I mean, and I think equity and inclusion is like shut down the back room. Mm -hmm. Not, okay, now black people can come or people of color or BIPOC can come in the back room. Mm -hmm. No, no, shut it down. Right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> because I don't believe that the back room is ever going to be shut down. Right. And I don't believe that the back room is going to... Um, still allow a person like me in it, in it. Mm. because it's traditional, mm. it's uh, her, 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 uh, heredity, it's um, culture, how a person was raised mm. through their ancestral. Mm -hmm. You gotta change, it's a lot to change mm -hmm. if you wanna try to include me into something. Right. It's a lot to thinking, it's, right. you know, it, it just, and I'm not mad at nobody. You know, I'm not mad at nobody because 
that's just where it is, you know what I'm saying? And it's how it happened. It just happened in America this, that way. But, you know, so it's hard to really <laughs> include all of this what we were trying to do across the world. Yeah. It really is, you know. So my question is, what, what you, you know, yeah. how, how do we... Well, you know, first yeah. of all, we can be mad at the system. Yeah. Um, you know, the system was built off of the exploitation of black labor and indigenous erasure in this country. And it's a system that's, you know, counting people out all the time. I mean, as, as you know well, I've made it my mission um, to, to ensure that people aren't left behind by a system that's broken, um, or maybe that's working really well, you know, and that um, is, is exclusive and, and continues to pit people against each other. And I, part of my mission has been to help people understand that it's costly to leave people behind, um, and it costs all of us our humanity to leave people behind. Um, for example, you know, 90% of our population growth in Vermont in the last decade or so has come from the in-migration of people of color. That's wow. through refugee resettlement, through, you know, in-migration to higher education and the, the medical um, ex establishments that we have. Uh, you know, most of our growth is coming from people of color. But of course, what we're seeing time and again is that Vermont does not have a recruitment problem when it comes to people of color. It has a retention problem. And so we, we are not a white state by accident. Um, you know, there are, there are cultural elements in place that say, you know, if you, if you just fit in a little better, if you just quieted down a little more, if you were just nicer to people, if you're more polite, um, things would go fine for you. And for many people of color, particularly black women, they don't have the privilege of staying silent about things that are killing people of color, that are excluding people of color, that are causing them to lose opportunity. Mm. Um, and so, you know, that's part of the reason I helped to create the Bright Leadership Institute that helps candidates of color across the state run for office. Um, what we found is, and I also helped found Emerge that's a, Vermont. That's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. that, that bright, that's a, that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, you know, and, and with Emerge Vermont, you know, we, it was just building sisterhood and a network and um, the training that people needed. But we realized for people of color, they need something extra. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have the same relationship to safety when they run for office. They don't have the same relationship to money when they run for office. There needs to be, you know, that extra support and discussion of cybersecurity and threats. Um, you know, one woman who ran for office, a black woman in Bennington, sent her son to go live with his father out of state when she was running um, because she was so afraid of, of what would happen to him while she was running. So, you know, Vermonters have to know this is the reality for people of color. They're not making it up and it's important to stay curious about it. Otherwise, we're gonna lose the only population growth we have. Uh, you know, the country is changing and we as a rural state have the opportunity to wrap our arms around these issues um, and to make sure that, that we live up to our values of freedom and unity in our state. That's right, freedom and unity. That's one of the reasons why I came in because it was like um, the motto was in Vermont, freedom and unity, and, and the Underground Railroad came through here. Yeah. And, um, and it was against slavery, you know, mm -hmm. so, and, you know. And so that's one reason why I moved to Vermont. But uh, <clears throat> another thing too is that, um, it's funny because you know I, I like I like Peter Welch. You know what I mean, our Congressman Peter Welch. I really do. Um, girl, I like everybody. Yeah, I was like, is there a butt coming here? <laughs> 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 the thing is that um, I, since I've known him and since I've followed him, since I've voted for him every time, mm -hmm. I really don't hear him. I haven't heard him say anything about a person who look like me really, mm -hmm. and I really haven't seen him really do the deal footwork for people who are maybe yes but mm. i don't see it as, if it is it's not something that should be spoken out loud mm -hmm. you know you know, on tv mm -hmm. shows and you know uh, things that you are you're, you're on um and so from i feel like you're just so you know regular business here's a person that's gonna um step up and win the um uh just like now he's gonna win this be a senator because mm. of that's how it works in vermont you know i mean yeah. it, it goes by the next step who's up next you know in theory you know um and so, the uh, only thing I heard him say about, uh, um, or about, well, I'm not going to say the only thing I heard him say, because I'm sure he said some things that, about personal like yeah. me that I haven't <laughs> heard. But uh, <clears throat> I remember one time when I was at, um, well, I was in Washington with um, the Youth Service Providers Network, I mean, with um, Vermont Coalition, mm -hmm. and, um, through the Department of Health, and we were visiting all our senators and, you know, all the, you know uh, congressmen and things like that. And so, we'll go to their office right in Washington, and... Um, and so we was in our Congressman Welch's office, mm -hmm. and with so many of us, because it was 20, 
23, 26 coalitions around the state mm -hmm. that we couldn't all, you know, in places to sit. But he said, Bruce, Bruce, sit at my desk. <laughs> so I sat at his desk, you know, and then um, one day it was getting a war for, at Kids Safe Collaborative. Yeah. And he was there and he's like, and he said, that, that Bruce guy who does all the work with youth, he took, he came in and took over my office. I mean, <laughs> he, you know, so I was like, wow, he remembered me and whatever. But, so I, you know, I thought that was yeah. it's funny, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but, um, but it wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't about, it's not about me. And, it's, and I, I, I never really heard him say nothing really personal mm. about somebody who looks like me. You Interesting. Know? So, well, have him on the show. That's what I would say. Have him on the show. Invite him here, um, you know, and, and I'll encourage him to say yes, even if he's busy. Um, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that, that Congressman Welch is evolving on these issues and evolving his understanding of the urgency in Vermont. And, you know, I, I remember um, after the, the attempted murder in Kenosha, you know, the gentleman who was shot seven times and, and survived was paralyzed. Um, you know, he, he called and he was reaching out to people across the state saying, I'm just really heart sick about what's happening in Kenosha and, you know, St. Louis. And, you know, he was naming a lot of other communities around the country. And a lot of people of color, you know, said, asked me if I could, they just said, well, you, you know, you seem to know Peter well enough to say, hey, it's not just those places out of state. It's, you know, Virgins. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Brattleboro that has nine times the rate of stops of black men, oh, wow. um, you know, it, it, by police than, than white folks. So, you know, people wanted Peter to know the urgency is not just about what's happening in the country, but what's happening in the state. And, you know, what I do love about, about Congressman Welch is if you call him, you know, he'll pick up his phone and say, you know, hey, Keisha, what's going on? And we could have that conversation. And he started to get far more active in the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Mm -hmm. He had Karen Bass, who's now running for mayor of Los Angeles, you know, do a, a Zoom session um, with myself, with heads of the NAACP. You know, he... Um, when, so, when it's pointed out to him that he has a blind spot, I really do believe he tries to work on it. Um, and you should have Peter on and you should have his incredible staff person, Tafine Dean. Mm -hmm. um, Tafine, you know, has been a real champion as well of, of access and resources for new American folks mm -hmm. who, you know, what we know to be true is that if people of color feel left behind, when you add language barrier, things get astronomically worse, uh, and especially in a pandemic where we didn't even barely understand the information we were getting in English, let alone if you don't know why your school is closed, if you don't know where to get help, if you don't know, you know, what's right or wrong information as you try to parse the culture that we're in. Um, and, you know, so I think his team has been making a lot of progress as he evolves, and I think he'd be the first person to say that he's evolving, and you should have him on the show to talk yeah. about it. Well, uh, I I like Peter. Like I said, I vote for him every time. Um, thing is, and I, and I will, I will ask him to come on the show. You yeah. know, but the thing is, for me, is like, um, um, like a lot of politicians, you know, they have the answers, mm. but do they actually are they actually boots on the ground? Mm. So I know you for being boots on the ground. Yeah, you know, not, and so it's, it's easy for you to get the answers because you mm -hmm. you get them from the people who you serve. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, I, I don't, you know, I see, I hear Bernie talking in Congress. Mm -hmm. I see him on the TV, is on, um, you know, the legislative forum. I see him on, talking on the floor, yeah. you know, everywhere. I see, I see him. Yeah. Actually doing the work that 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 he said that he uh, was trying to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so. You I, know, people have. Asked, I mean, people are asking, what is there a difference you see between yourself and the current congressman? I mean, right? People, mm -hmm. of course, there's a lot of. Uh, votes he's taken I agree with there's a lot of priorities he's advanced that I care about around climate change and energy policy but I, I do think you're right you know that um, what someone prioritizes you know prioritizing the embedding of social and racial and economic justice in everything that they do is really critical and you know there I think there are ways that that Peter has evolved on that front as well I think you know I have said in other forums, he is a quieter leader. He's more, you know, he spent a long time maybe in that, you know, Obama mold trying to find the solution and the common ground, which comes from our training in the Vermont legislature, I think, which is, you know, a wonderful place where you can 
you know, you can work with anybody, regardless of what you disagree on, you can still find agreement and you can, you know, you can see each other at the end of the day, exchange pleasant words and come back the next morning and sort of live, live to disagree, agree wherever you may stand. That is not the case in Washington anymore. Um, you know, there is a party that is, uh, you know, bent on the destruction of our democracy and the, the destruction of our institutions as we know them. They don't believe in civility. Um, they are ostracizing their own members who are trying to, you know, um, combat the lies and the, um, the, the real erosion of our, of our decency as, as political parties. Um, so, you know, it is no longer time to try and be, um, you know, be civil and be nice with folks who are trying to destroy our planet and our democracy. Um, and I think that is one place where we differ, although I know that he's been there for a long time as the culture has changed and, you know, maybe been like a frog in boiling water. You know, now when we look from the outside, that, that place looks like, um, you know, a, a war zone for the future of this country. Well, I, we're all aware that you're uh, also in a, the middle of a candidacy to replace uh, Peter Welsh in, in that House of Representatives seat. Um, and I feel like as, as a Vermonter of less than 10 years, mm -hmm. um, I hear the, the term the Vermont way, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring the Vermont way to Washington, or we oh, need yeah. more of the Vermont way. Mm -hmm. What is the Vermont way to you? What does that mean to you? <laughs> Good yeah, question. Yeah, that, that <laughs> is a great question. And you know, I, I frame it this way. I woke up one morning <laughs> thinking, you know, in Vermont, Success is not, you know, how many cars you have, but how many cars you have pulled out of a ditch. Wow. And, you know, I really think we measure a person's worth and value mm -hmm. by how much they lift up other people and how much they help their neighbors. And that person holds high esteem in the community. You know, coming from somewhere else, I mean, I, I escaped Los Angeles. I consider myself a climate immigrant. I wanted my wow. future children to have clean air and clean water. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and a safe community. Um, I, I love being in a state that truly values, um, you know, what someone offers to their neighbors, you know, not what someone takes. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen it in the business community and across the board, you know, people um, don't define success as a business person by their profit margin, but by, you know, how much they're investing back in their employees and their families. And so I think we truly do have a lot to offer the rest of the country that comes from the Vermont way. It's interesting that you say that. I, I am a product of UVM and <laughs> shout out Kelly Hamshaw and yeah. uh, the Community and Economics Developments Department. Totally. I always think about the different forms of capital and how it's not only financial, mm -hmm. but there is social capital, there's economic capital, there's mm -hmm. uh, political capital, there's uh, so, uh, environmental capital. And, right. And, and a, a business's purpose doesn't only have to be to drive financial capital, That's but right. that human capital and that social capital and that environmental. And I really do feel that Vermont businesses uh, and individuals don't always see finance as the bottom line, and mm -hmm. I, I do appreciate that. Exactly. We, yeah. And we have been national leaders in trying to measure progress differently and trying to measure what business success looks like differently from you know, Ben and Jerry's to seventh generation. Now, mm -hmm. beta technologies is going to be a very interesting um, developing, you know, uh, business that's almost going to create its own industry and, and evolve transportation, um, you know, with, with uh, zero energy drone technology, delivering organs, delivering, um, you know, needed supplies quickly and without using fossil fuels. I think they're going to revolutionize a lot of things and we're fortunate to have them doing it from Burlington Airport, yeah. you know, so I think there's just people uh, want to grow here with a certain ethos, and that gives us a lot to, to bring to the rest of the country. Kyle and his whole team have been really impressive, and I'm so excited to see what they do for Vermont. Yeah. Does that intersect with what you hope your role to be in Washington? Absolutely. You know, um, we should take our sense that we kind of have one foot in the pasture and one foot in the future to, you know, to Washington. This notion that we can keep a lot of our traditions and the things we do love about our deep sense of community, our rural landscape, um, our, our value for open space, mm -hmm. and at the same time innovate and create green technology, green businesses, mm -hmm. you know, um, success that still has a light footprint on the earth. 
you know, I think it's one of the reasons that I have Bill McKibben's support in this race is, you know, um, he, he, he knows that I can sort of go in the weeds and also in the streets to really convince people that we have something special here and that we should replicate it around the country. I really appreciate, I was reading your website uh, before today, and <laughs> I really appreciate you use the term co-governing mm, and yeah. how, you know, Bruce echoed that as well, saying you are boots on the ground, you are yeah. in the community, you're talking to people, you're probably personally responding to constituent emails and whatnot. And uh, do you think you'll still have that same opportunity if you were to be in the House of Representatives? You know, I, I, I hope so and believe so. And I think we have a great model in Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. you know, doing that so well. Um, really in touch via c all the communication channels imaginable, as well as coming back and doing forums. I mean, I think the place Bruce and I first met was a forum that Bernie did for uh, people of color. And it was like 2007, you know. Yeah, long time. Um, and that, you know, that was a commitment that he was making then. So, you know, I, I think Peter Welch does it as well. I mean, so does Senator Leahy, you know, um, but it's, it shouldn't be hard when you have a small state, particularly like ours, mm -hmm. to, you know, constantly be touring, mm -hmm. watching what people are doing, staying in touch with them, creating a two-way dialogue and, you know, bringing bringing also some of that thinking here. One of the things that I've, dim, uh, that I've felt in this election so far is it's been 16 years since huh. we've had a congressional race and we haven't had a lot of uh, robust conversations about foreign policy, about where Vermont fits into that, about rural trade and rural development and how we intersect with a global marketplace. I, I recall, you know, um, when Senator Sanders brought the I think maybe the um, the president or prime minister of Finland here to talk about what a small you know a small country can contribute that has heavy social values um, and you know invest in its people and you know so it it was a it was a wonderful um, example of how you know Vermont wants to be part of a global conversation and elections like this but also ongoing engagement can do more to bring that that ethos to Washington and back. That's a really good point. I, I really appreciate that you brought up how Vermont sits on that national stage too. I mean, right now in Detroit, I believe, we're seeing the Ambassador Bridge, I guess, just was cleared just the other day. Yeah. Um, do you see something like that potentially happening in Vermont? I mean, we do share our border with, uh, with Canada. You know, I think it's a good reminder. I mean, just going back to the, I mean, the ways that we police and um, monitor our southern border mm -hmm. and our northern border is pretty informal you know we have if, if anybody's been up to derby line you know we have like a couple of folks sitting in a little mm -hmm. little cabin you know <laughs> and uh, and and we it's quaint and we love it you know um, but what they're doing in in on that border is you know causing um, chaos economic loss etc you know and so to me, it's just a reminder that um, we have to balance meeting people's needs with this huge hypocrisy around who we criminalize and who we don't. Um, and you know, th we we should really be taking a look at you know civil disobedience with the same lens. Um, we have you know arrested people for trying to protest in the streets when a black man is is murdered in front of you know hundreds of people, and yet at the same time we are you know people around the country and in Canada have felt powerless to stop this particular demonstration. Um, you know, I, I hope we can meet somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, I do think Vermonters have been, you know, um, engaged in, in incredible, you know, civil and social protest. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, if you look at our border, it reminds us of some of the better ideas that exist in other places, you know, that we should borrow from as well. I mean, a vial of insulin, you know, probably costs like one, you know, at less than a tenth of what it costs here when you go across the border in Canada. What is happening, you know, that our healthcare system and the cost of prescription drugs is so broken? Yeah, yeah. those are good questions. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so I, I was, I've just been honored to be able. The governor appointed me to the Human Rights Commission, so I'm a oh, commissioner. Oh yes, Congra I can say congratulations yeah. to you in person, finally, yeah. Bruce. And, um, yeah. Also, um, the mayor of Winooski um, appointed me to be on the Winooski Housing Authority um, Board of Commissioners. 
And so, and I'm very honored to to be on those positions. I sit on a lot of different committees and That's commissions, right. but the thing is that why I sit on these things is not because it's not about me. I'm always in the back, you know. It's about the people who we serve, and it's about the people who look like me, giving the, um, not necessarily getting our fair opportunities. That's not my whole objective, but also them to learn about what what they the information get the information they should know about mm -hmm. you know I mean that's so important because people who look like me specifically particularly in um, Winiski don't get the information they don't get the bro you know if they get the brochures they probably don't really read them as as well as you might read read them Tim or any of us because um, from from there from other countries you know mm -hmm. even though they might speak like five different like five more languages than us <laughs> but they might not be able to get the English as well as as we would like for them to and so. How do you, um, what do you, what's your goals in working with people who like live in Winooski, yeah. um, um, New Americans and uh, all around, primarily around the, country, around the state, but particularly in Winooski? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm the daughter of an immigrant who was a small business owner and who actually, you know, coming from India spoke perfect English, um, you know, but was still discriminated against. So that's only compounded several times over when um, you know, you you look different, you sound different, um, you know, the xenophobia sets in even if it's unconscious for folks. So, so many of the issues I've tackled have been to ensure they can gain a foothold in society and the economy. Right now, um, so last year, one of the things I did that feels small, but it was actually really critical, was came from hearing folks saying, you know, my lifeline as someone who doesn't speak good English and is just coming to this country and I have small kids, was that cultural liaison in the schools. You know, they call, sometimes they call it their social worker, right? My social worker, I don't have them in the pandemic raging in the middle of summer because they're only, you know, hourly wage workers who are available during the school year. And so I, it was a small bill, but one that is already being um, utilized in, in communities that have a lot of new American folks, which was to share the positions to allow our finance system between education and municipalities to share those positions so that they can be a municipal and a, a district position and year round can serve families instead of saying, oh, I can't do that because you know my, my job is only with the district. Those cultural liaisons are incredible lifelines for folks and they're already underpaid and you know have to figure out how they're gonna fit all of that help into their the hours that they have. So we passed a bill that changed that last year that I was really proud of. This year I'm working on, it's, it's even more ambitious, it's a language access plan for the entire state of Vermont. Another thing we saw in the pandemic, as I was talking about before, is if you didn't have information in English, that could be life or death, mm -hmm. you know, um, or it's, sorry, in your language. your language, that could be life or death. That could mean you're lacking access to business opportunities mm -hmm. as well as important medical information. About it. And so, um, you know, starting with emergency communications and life-saving services and moving toward, you know, services that you need to participate in government and then to things that are really nice to have in government, um, we are looking at a comprehensive language access plan for the state so that the most popular language is spoken. You can easily get the written materials and you can get a, a, really any language you speak, you should be able to get an, an oral interpreter on the phone right away without guesswork. Um, and it's a culture change too because for so often, you know, a police officer might have thought, I'll just have the child interpret in this, right, you know, right, emergency situation, right, which is right. frightening, you know, yeah, or, yeah. oh, in court, like, it's okay, we'll have the same interpreter for the defendant and the plaintiff. Right, yeah. You know, it takes people's humanity away to not think about how language becomes, you know, a source of dignity um, and, and a lifeline. And so, you know, I'm constantly thinking about ways to advance um, new American experience mm -hmm. in Vermont. And so um, I know um, um, who's your who's your intern your person you brought yeah Emily in, Emily, Emily from yeah. where she do she's from Washington and, um, and she, Emily's from Washington County um, yeah em Emily Shackman uh, I'm probably embarrassing her, her right now <laughs> she's working with you with the police um, some for police initiative or some I you know I I think a hallmark of my leadership always has been to ensure other young people can get involved no doubt you about know it. Um, it just it they. I was that student who introduced an environmental justice bill as a senior at UVM with a, a legislator who said, this is really brilliant. You should help write a bill, you know, and that inspired me to run for the legislature. So it means a lot to know that there are other young people who want to be part of the process yeah. and who one day, you know, when they get there, see how accessible it is 
and how much you know of an impact they can have. And so, you know, um, to to work with Emily on drafting the bill, looking what other states are doing on police oversight and accountability, from no knock warrant bans right. to you know ending cash bail mm -hmm. to independent investigation into use of force. She helped me look at best practices in other states where things are not going well, ending qualified immunity in Colorado, and that makes me a more informed legislator and hopefully you know when some of those bills pass um, you know she'll feel just as proud that she had a hand in changing mm -hmm. you know state policy. No doubt about it. Yeah. No doubt about it and also she'd be like a way ahead of the curve when she ready to start um, not start but even do more about helping make change you know she already be smart about what's going on she know the issues and so she'd be like also know what people are saying to um, what they're saying, what their concerns are, what their ideas and suggestions are, and she would know how to, she, and she not will know, she know how to implement. That's so yeah. funny because like, she's not, she's already ready to go, you right. know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> she's already so ready. One of the things that we're really proud of in Vermont, but you can sort of see the, you can see the kind of, um, the cultural differences at work, we have a page program, you know, we have legislative pages and a lot of them end up learning about the process, running for office later in life, they are all in middle school. And it takes some privilege from your parents or connection. You know, a lot of the pages that come through, they may have parents who served in political office. They know about the program. I never knew about that program growing up. And so, you know, those are often the folks that end up coming back into the State House. The first time I went into the State House, I was a sophomore at UVM. And my mentor who took me around the state house, his name is Ernie Shand from Weathersfield. And, you know, I could barely keep up with him. He was, we went to go talk about broadband, then we went to go meet with kids who wanted to, you know, end tobacco use. And, you know, we, we had this full day. And he said, I hope one day, you know, I see you back here in one of these seats. And two years later, I sat two seats down from him wow. in the legislature. Wow, awesome it man. really changes things when, you know, you feel like, yes, I could take one of these seats. I try to invite as many young people as I can into the process so they see it's not scary. Um, and that, you know, they can make a difference. You've gone so far as to start programs to do that exactly. Yes. Can you tell us about Emerge and, and that other program? I and forget. Bright Leadership. Yeah, bright Leadership. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, often when you, when you sort of find all the people that you need to run for office and be a leader and you do all the guesswork, mm -hmm. you t hopefully you turn around and say, is there a better way to do this? You know, and how can I make this easier for the next person sure. coming along? Um, with Emerge, you know, a program that's expanding all over the country, um, Governor Madeline Kunin came home from a trip and said, I think she was visiting with maybe Emerge Oregon, Emerge California. She was on the West Coast. And, you know, she said, this program's going around the country. Here's why I think it's great to help women really build a network to run for office. And I was honored to be one of just a handful of people in her living room starting that wow. program. Started out of a living yeah. room. Yeah. You know, it's That's like... That's the Vermont way. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Found, Drink some tea. Tim. Save the world. You found something. <laughs> a Vermont, a you found a yeah. Vermont way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Can we get some tea on here? Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we got like three more minutes. Won't okay, you, um, yeah. Won't yeah. you um, talk about um, um, your, your platform? Oh, well, let me ask you one question. Because... Yeah. Um, since I've been in Vermont since in '89, I really don't know what. Our, um, I know Bernie. When I, I worked with him, like we did everything, you know, with the youth, with um, working with youth. Yeah. And he was he, he was dead on big with working with youth mm -hmm. with their goals uh, and aspirations in life. Um, and so I, I learned a lot from what a congressman do here. But since since then, um, tell me what what's the role of a congressman? What do they do? Yeah. I mean, period. What's that? What's your job description? That's really? that, that's a great question. Hard maybe to answer in just a couple minutes, um, you know. But I I think that casework piece is so important. We can't forget that you have one member of Congress. That person is your link to, you know, small business loans. That person is your link to a program at the federal level that's not working for our nonprofits here and how to fix it. You know, your your one member of Congress. Um, can really help you as a family, as a business, um, as a community, get what you need. And so that being responsive to the community is incredibly important. I have been talking to folks who've worked on both sides. You know, um, there are like, uh, you know, 
some folks who've worked for Bernie, who, both in the House and the Senate, and they'll say, man, you get so much more support and <laughs> office space and staff when you're in the Senate. Um, you know, so you really, as the, you have to be kind of scrappy as the Congresswoman <laughs> um, and, you know, take your small staff and make sure you're, you're meeting the needs of Vermonters while collaborating across the board with your colleagues um, in the Senate, with other Vermonters. Um, I think, you know, two, it's to really look at the policies, the budget items, the programs and initiatives that are going to help Vermonters and, and in my mind, those who are, it's go, that are going to help those who are otherwise left behind by government um, and really, you know, negotiate what Vermont needs, but also do that. And I mean, I've constantly done that in a way where I've said, hey, you know, this is what Burlington needs. What does the Northeast Kingdom need, right? You know, so at some point, you know, being from one of the most rural states in the country, you have to go and say, hey, I know that New York City or LA or Chicago need this. Here's what Vermont needs. How do we meet all of our needs on, you know, rural and urban public works issues? And how do we find those openings? That's what I've been doing for 10 years in the legislature. And then, you know, finally, this is what I learned to do from, you know, President Obama when he came and visited and encouraged me to run for office, which is a great leader, you know, sees the good work people are doing and they lift it up. And they lift up, you know, what their their hopes and dreams and what they can do for the country because a leader doesn't mean you're sort of on your own sitting in your office like planning you know how to solve the world's problems it means you're looking at people who are already doing that work in the community and making sure they're being heard and they're being celebrated so that they can continue that good work and it's what i've always tried to do as a legislator and it's what i hope to do as vermont's congresswoman yeah. you're going to be one phenomenal congresswoman uh, no, no doubt about it no doubt about it We're, I totally appreciate you. I'm, I'm honored just to just I'm, I, you know, I'm honored just you you running and you know oh. considering being in Congress. So wow, anything you want to do, I'm I'm down with you. Know? <laughs> I'm down with you because I know I know it's not you know we have a lot of in my program nonprofit. I have sponsors to this and that. And I'm not I don't because they say Bruce here's a thousand dollars. Don't mean that I, I care about the thousand dollars. You know, it's just working like, oh, I care about youth issues, I care about education, I care about, you know, safe environments, you know, healthy outlets. And so for that, for me, th yeah, I'll take your thousand, you know what I mean? Um, so it's the same as you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't support a person or w want to um, feel proud or s smiling right now is because cause, um, you running for congressman, uh, congresswoman. I know what you have done, to, you know, for years. I've known you for, I don't know, what, 15 years. Yeah. And so yeah. I've, I've known the work. And so that's what makes me proud. And I'm happy that you're doing this work. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see nobody, you know, we just, we just need to um, get you there, you know, just see <laughs> the money coming, you know what I'm saying, uh, to your organization. But uh, <clears throat> I, I just, I, nobody else have, no one else have that information. You know, you you can, if you felt like it, you can rebuttal anything somebody was any other person would say, like like a, a, any other candidate. Or she can rebuttal it at the highest level. You know, right there, like Obama, too, you know, Leahy or Bernie. You know, I mean, anybody. You know, she, or Malin Cunin. You know, you you can you you you've been there. I mean, like wholeheartedly mm -hmm. on the boots on the ground, not for just one day. I mean, for like tireless. So I, I know this, you know what I'm saying? I know this. And um and some others, you know, who's just wanna I don't I don't know what their goal is, why they wanna be um I don't know why they wanna be um in Congress or whatever. I don't know why. I don't know what their goals and aspirations of being in, in the Congress. But I think um their goals and aspirations because <laughs> they feel like they just want to be there. <laughs> I think that's what it is. But when you come down to boots on the ground, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they can name names. They can name a lot of names, people they know, or, and, and done some clerkship or some internships with. But that, you know, working with the people who you serve and actually making outcomes, like helping that person get in there, uh, doing the things you did for that person, their housing and the different things, who come to you and ask you for, please help me. And you hel helped and you helped them. And then you're like, you know, that's you move you don't like drop them you make sure it's good and they come back and say it's good and you you, you just continue to do the work you do and it's just, it's the humbling piece that about you and um and and um this wisdom you have you know what i'm saying that's important you, that's very important you gotta really um love the people who you um everybody and you got to have um be humble you know and um 
like I say, you know, if you be humble, um, humble brings, uh, being humble brings wisdom, and wisdom brings long life, first and foremost. And it's all about self. It's not even about the people. That's number one, and you got all of that. And so I don't know, I don't, maybe the other ones do, but, it's, you know, who, you got to feel that from those people, first of all. You know, you got to feel it, just like I say, like um, equity and inclusion and diversity and um, justice. If you don't feel what, I'm, what a person who looks like me is saying, if you can't feel it, then you really don't, you, you don't get it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you just understand what, you understand, you know what justice means, you know what equity means, you know what diversity means, you know what, it, you know what it means. We can Google right now and they'll tell you what it means, you know, mm -hmm. in theory, you know what I mean, but not really, not really, but you, some special, and I mean, for that, I mean, just, just who you are. And it's not many people who, who um, like um, Keisha, um, I, you know, I don't only really know what one in Vermont. <laughs> that's, that's right, I'm on Team Keisha. But the, I, only know, I only know one, really. I'm not just, you know, people know me. Like, I know I work with the governors, you know, she'll tell you, senators, and all they all know me, you know, and they know that I'm like, I'm, I say what I say, I mean it, I, I said it in front of whoever. Because I mean it, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, it, you know, it's so funny. I, I, Leahy, who's, you know, um, who's um, retired, you know, he's, he's the funniest guy. I'd like to say some thank God for Leahy, he was, you know, and um, his wife. Um, they are awesome people. I, I, see, I used to see Leahy uh, places. Last time I saw him, I think it was in Costco's or something. He, you know, he had always like a little secret survey people run who, who's that guy talking he's like bruce bruce come over here you know every time i see him this is what he do come over here you know and he opened up his wall look look at my grandson look how big his guy you know his grandson is a you know a black person you know, and then he always look at my grandson bruce. he ain't getting big you know he's all i'm always know that's what he go he's gonna say to me you know when he um when, when i see him you know and um and, you know, Marcel, you know, who's never left his side. God, well, she's a companion, a strong lady. You know, and she don't say nothing, but you bet she's got a lot to say. Boy. Yeah. Uh, well, you know? thanks, so, Bruce, so much yeah. for having me. No thank you for all your it. reflections, and thank you for your kind words. Um, oh, no. It's, it's, it's always an honor and a privilege. Oh, no, no. I want, you know. And thanks, Tim. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for well, this opportunity, yeah, Bruce. No doubt it's about it. Yeah. And so, um, thank you. State Honorable <laughs> State Senator <laughs> Keisha Ram Hinsdale with the bling bling on <laughs> coming on our show and letting the people know um, your platform and how you feel about Vermont and what your goals and aspirations are. And, and um, I guess you can tell them how they can help you yes. right here. Yes. About you. Um, uh. Yes. So, right. Thank you for my team would have been mad. Um, so my website is KeishaForVermont.com, K-E-S-H-A. For Vermont, all spelled out, com. You can learn more and get involved and support our effort to meet the moment. So really appreciate that, and um, thank you for having me. No, you're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont Show, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>